On today's episode of 21st Gear, I'm going to be reviewing something that came out for the Intellivision. Now, this was a feature on the Intellivision called the Intellivoice. It's the voice synthesis module. What the hell is that? Well, basically, what it does is add voice to your game. Now, unfortunately, it didn't work with all games. It only worked with five games that were released. I own three of which. Um, the games I have are B-17 Bomber, Space Spartans, and Bomb Squad. Now, to tell these games apart at the store, they see it talks on the side and are categorized in this sort of tan, whatever you call it, case. Now, as you know, red games on the Intellivision were action, blue games were sports, and then there's the multicolored ones, some of which the multicolored ones weren't released by Mattel. Now, anyways, in order for this to work, there's no upgradable power supply plugged in, which is nice. Now, one fact about this is they were going to release one built for the Intellivision 2, which was the same width and color and had a dial on the top. Now, unfortunately, they do show them in pictures, but it was never actually released or created, and the pictures simply showed a card out, carved out bar blah, block of wood. Sorry about that. Now, you have to wiggle it into the cartridge slot and then pick a game. I'm going to go with B-17 Bomber. Now, of course, slide the overlays in. And then I have to wiggle the cartridge in. I mean, it's just over. It's stupid. I mean, they don't just. They do just plug in, but it's stupid. I mean, most cartridge based consoles are easy. Like the NES. I mean, look at this. Front loading NES. Take a game, snake rail and roll, plug it in, now you hit down. Of course, there's going to be the red light, but voila! Top loader. Now, of course, as I've said before, this is not the Nintendo licensed top loader. Just plug it in, power up, and you've got game. But no, this thing you gotta wiggle around with it like it's stupid. Well, anyways, hit the volume up on this. But believe it or not, it doesn't come through a speaker on this, it comes through the TV. Which makes me wonder what these vents on the front are for. Anyways, so I'm gonna sit down the And here we go, realistic voice. Mattel Electronics presents B17 Bomber. That's it. That's the realistic sound. It sounds like Microsoft sound on ecstasy. I mean, listen Mattel to this. Mattel Electronics presents B17 Well, anyways, let's ignore that. Basically, this game took me a bit to figure out. What you do is you select targets. For stupid process. Once selecting the target, you go into the cockpit of the plane, where you then accelerate the plane, and you can switch from pilot to bomb bay, which is not working right now, to gun, to sort of a scoreboard, and then to gauges. All you really have to do here is keep it level. And the voice guy helps you text, as I like to call them, sits there and tells you which way you have to watch for guns. Now, seeing it takes about half an hour to get to the point where he does that, I'll just show you a basic demonstration. I guess I can show you a basic demonstration. That's my target. Oh, today it won't let me use the bomb blade, baby. So... That's my review of this game. Maybe later I'll do a longer review. And then the next game I'd like to review is Bomb Squad. Now, luckily, mine's almost mint condition, as you can see from the pictures here. Now, I do like the art on the front of this, but I've said it before, you can't judge a game by its cover, which is the same as a book. Now, like I said, mint condition. I love the overlays in this. They kind of match the uh, horrible color of the box. And they give you all the tools you need to use. And it's not something stupid with 50 controls you don't use. It's very basic. Now, I also got these paper things, which I think were originally came with every game and went underneath to release clickety clacky on each control. But I don't use those because it's a waste of time. Now, hopefully, this game will have better voice synthesis. I don't know what you call it. Wiggle in the cartridge. Mattel Electronics presents Bomb Squad. Ooh. Well, 
up, same voice. Now this whole game is kind of twisted. I mean, you get these creepy sirens and all, and pick bomb one. Hit enter. Hit They'll never do it in time. The code, the code, figure out the code. Well, what I have to do here, I guess, is defuse a bomb. Replace this first, this second. Basically, I'm getting yelled at by everyone to defuse a bomb that doesn't help me. I like how much time they give me, though. I mean, I've never actually gotten to the end of this game. I always end up getting too frustrated to finish a level. But, if it actually takes you a half an hour to complete this game. Left, more. Left, more. Left, more. Long part. He just told me to go left more, and then it doesn't do anything. And now my timer's flipping out. Twenty minutes. Oh, damn it. Maybe if I cut out that part. Well, let's try soldering that again. Long part. You know, I wish they gave you also a real gun rather than a soldering one so you can shoot yourself for buying this game. I mean, it's a fun game, but the controls. Right more. Right more. Right more. Right more. Well, I just installed more. A, new, a new part and you don't have to take it out. Because I think it was the wrong part, even though it instructed me to use that one. Piece of junk. There's only one other red part, and if that doesn't work, I'm gonna be mad. Why are you replacing parts on a bomb? Shouldn't you just be taking them all out? For some reason, dropping a part. Twenty-six minutes till last. Right more. Right more. Left. Okay, okay. Well, I guess that was the right part. You know, you think they could have made every single color part of color. Well, on to the next game. Seeing I don't feel like defusing an entire bomb. Now, if you don't know what happens, basically, after a while, that city, which is shown at the beginning, this city, one of the buildings, uh, blows up. And then you feel terrible for killing a bunch of pixelated creatures. That sound like a bunch of deformed wombats. I don't even know what the hell that sounds like. See, that's the thing. You kind of make assumptions. With these old consoles, you actually need your imagination. Imagination my ass. I wish I had an imagination so I could not actually play games and just imagine playing them. So I think I can imagine from looking at these games that they suck. Now, the last game I'm going to show you that I own is Space Spartans. Now, almost mint condition, except I don't have the paper things. This is something I kind of find amusing. This came with quite a few in television games. It shows some creepy old guy. Basically, they all look shocked that he's actually stupid enough to buy a television and is enjoying it. And he looks like some little blonde version of Jim Carrey. Anyways, I think it's here. Available soon! If they're releasing the game, Space Spartans, before the Intellivoice, what the hell are you buying it for? Are you that stupid you think it's just gonna... I mean, you kinda need it in some of these games, because otherwise you don't know where the hell things are coming from or what the hell you're supposed to do. I mean, the feature's kinda neat, but I think it's ahead of its time and all, and they didn't release enough games for it. 
Now another thing it features in that magazine is that you can play normal Intellivision games on the Intellivoice, but it doesn't add sound. Is that a feature, or are they just telling you that it doesn't do anything? That's like saying, oh, you can put an N SNES game into a NES, but guess what, it won't do anything, but it'll look cool. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. It just makes me mad. Well, anyways, finally Space Spartans, and I was so mad I put away the stupid overlay. Mattel Electronics presents Space Spartans. Slow. This game is slow. This game is really slow. I mean, the creatures in the game sound like they're slow. So for that, I'm going to play it on slow. Now, one thing that creeps me out is the tracking computer. Hello, Commander. Computer reporting. What the hell was that? I mean, I'm playing... I'm playing Space Spartans, not Sex Talk the Game on the Intellivision. Homosexual. I mean, it's creepy. I don't want to listen to that. They should have given the pixelated... That's another thing. That's kind of one of the most realistic voices in the game. And yet, it's a computer in the game. And then the guys down at head controls are... He they sound like robots again. I mean, the whole thing's stupid. Well, anyways, one thing I kind of like is the hyperdrive. You change your view to here. And then you hit impulse drive. Impulse drive off. Impulse drive on. Oh, that's right. You have to pick a place you're going to go. Well, I'll go right there. Energy level 10,000. Energy level 10,000. That's another thing. Sometimes the buttons... I've only had this problem with this game on the Intellivision. Stick. I think it has something to do with the overlays or something. Or maybe it's a glitch in the game. But then it doesn't do anything, and it just sits there repeating itself stupidly. Well, anyways, now that I've done that, I'm going to put hyperdrive on. <laughs> Now that's another thing. It gets this crude crashing noise and you get a cheesy Nixon emblem for your ship. Now when you go places God damn it, it's not the right place. Well if you go places with enemies what happens is it You fight these creepy looking ships, most of which look like Darth Vader <coughs> TIE fighters. <coughs> Well, I mean, I kind of like this part of the game to shoot him up here, but it doesn't really need the entire voice. I mean, it updates you on what they are, but they should just ma ma they should have just made shoot him up here like this. I mean, the other part is kind of cool, but according to this, it's some sort of battle, and it's supposed to be really epic. The whole thing just comes off stupid to me. I mean. I like this game. It's a fun game, but I just don't think they needed the Intellivoice. I think they could have made the game without the Intellivoice feature, and could have simply just, you could have watched them zoom in, and it says 1,600 feet. I mean, I love, I like the gameplay in it, but the Intellivoice isn't really needed, if I haven't said it enough. I mean, lots of these games, you could probably play it without it. It's just kind of stupid, the whole feature and all. I mean, they should have released tons of games on it, like soccer games with announcers and whatnot. Well, anyways, uh, this has been this week's 21st Gear Reviews, and it was actually a good one. Some of these games I enjoyed playing. So, uh, I'll see you next week.